Hi everyone, welcome to Zoom America in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. Today we're going to be uh, talking about our D3 system with uh, Mind Software. We're going to be doing some pattern matching on some uh, umbrella type material. And I'll first I'll talk about the cutting system a little bit. Uh, we are going to be using our D3 cutter. This is a D3 2XL 3200. 2XL being the width, 3200 millimeters being the length. Um, I'm going to be using it in single beam mode, although we do have two beams. Uh, most of our customers are using a single beam cutter, so for this application, I just want to keep that typical for what most people are doing. On this table, I have a whole capture area right here. Um, with this, I have control over the lighting via the roof that's on top and then some LED lights that are facing up to diffuse them a little bit. In here, I also have a camera to take a picture of whatever is on the extension, and I also have projectors to allow me to see visually what is down there. So once we get into placing the parts and nesting things, we'll get into that and I'll show what we're actually looking to see with the projectors and the camera. So why don't we get move over to the software and uh, I'll walk you through that a little bit. Okay, so in the software, um, this is called Minecut Studio. Uh, in here I have a part that I already have loaded up. If I wanted to load up a new one, I could either load it, just hit the open button, and open parts through the PDM, which is our um, product database manager, or a file. I had this one from a file and I already have it set up with some match points that we'll discuss uh, in a minute once we go to start nesting. So I already have a material that I captured, but let's get rid of that and do another one. So I'll hit using camera by fabric pattern, have pattern materials selected. Then I have two options over here. I have my background, which is just the green conveyor belt. Then I have the material, which is what's on the table. So I'm going to hit capture material, wait for the picture to load. and. We'll see it right here on the extension. With that, I have some options for uh, my report type. So make sure we have 15 parts in uh, that are available for us to nest. First, we have to hit OK to confirm the material. We'll go through and hit play, and this is uh, will allow us to automatically nest. If I wanted to place a part manually, you can click here in the interactive nesting. 15, 15 of these triangles available. I can place it anywhere within the material. Once I get outside the material, it turns red. Inside the material, it's green. I can rotate it freely with my the wheel on my mouse. Uh, I have some other options if I right click. Turning on auto rotate or precision rotate, and I can rotate around a center point. Um, the nice thing about this software is it's highly customizable and can really be either condensed or expanded to whatever the needs of the end user are. I'll hit escape out of here and I'm not going to actually manually nest anything. I want to let the software do all the work. I'm just going to hit the play button. It'll go for about 15-30 seconds and it'll give me the amount of parts that are available to nest or how many it can, can fit in the space. So in the nesting window, I can see that it's using these two points to find the most efficient way to nest. So we've got 14 of 15 parts. I can hit the check mark, which stops it. All right, so now we are back at the projection or at the projection station. I'm going to turn off these lights so we can see the parts that are placed down a little bit easier. So we can see that. Uh, we have all our parts in the space that we already laid out. So let me go to the computer and I can select some things. Can make it a little bit easier to see or I can really manipulate it to really whatever I want. With this, I'm happy with how it nested. I can visually see where it's going to cut. It looks fine to me. And then once this process is done, I can move it forward to the cutting station. Now I'm going to bring everything forward. I'll hit the play button right here. 
What that will do is bring the material into the cutting area automatically. Alright, now that we have the material in the cutting area, we can start that. So, we'll start right now. We are using our power rotary tool. It has two pieces. It has the uh, top part, and this is actually the motor down here. The blade that we're using is a Z50. It is, is a rotary blade that it has multi-sided. What's nice about this material is that because, or with this tool, because the material is very porous, we're not getting much vacuum hold down. In fact, the vacuum is barely on right now. But because the tool is spinning independently of its movement, it's not creating any drag force across the material. So you might be seeing it pick up a little bit, but it's really not picking picking the material up at much at all. So with that, actually did pick it up enough where we broke a light barrier. All I do with that, check to see what what's free. Continue. That was just because our nest was a little close, so it dragged that thin piece with it and picked up enough to uh, break that light barrier. We have some safeties on this machine, front and back. So, keep everyone from getting their fingers cut off. So, same as when the fabric broke the light barrier. All I have to do is acknowledge that, then restart it, and it'll pick up right where it left off. Software will tell me how many parts I'm cutting and how many I have left. So right now I'm at 11 of 14 parts, now moving to 12. So we have two more parts left after this one's done. Once these are done, we'll move into our pickup area, which will have this, a similar projection as the placement, but this will help us to know what if we had multiple part numbers on our uh, nest. Now we will bring the material forward to our pickup area which also has some projectors on it. Simple as me clicking to move. Feed will come down. We'll bring everything forward. Once it's all the way forward the projection will come down and we'll know where what parts what. For this one I don't have anything in, embedded into the part so all I'll see is the outline. Now we are at our pickup area. I have the projection of the outline of the parts placed here. Uh, helps me to easily identify what's being uh, what was cut prior so I can put it in a bin easier when I'm going to take it off the table. Um, within the part I can have a lot of information embedded into it that could make it a little bit easier if I had multiple files built in to the nest. Um, with that I could have them flash, but with this it's a very basic file, so all I have is the outline and the name through cut. So I can, it's really easy to take these off. I can get my fingernail in there. These pennant shapes. As we can see, the PRT did a great job cutting everything out. No hangers. Can very easily weed everything. This table is rather large, so hard for me to reach over to the other side, but we would uh, try to match your table size to the material width that you most commonly use. This one is sized the way it is for capturing a full leather hides. For If you were cutting material this size all the time, we'd probably have a table that's around 60 inches wide instead of the uh, almost double, or almost 120 inches that this one is. So, 
have all my pieces here. Try to match them up as best I can, show they're all the same size. Zoomed is repeatable at a thousandth of an inch, so we're trying to hold ourselves to that tolerance all the time. But yeah, uh, if you have any further questions about the cutting systems or any kind of Zoom products, reach out to infous at, at zoom.com and we can contact the proper salesperson for you. Thank you for joining us. Have a good day.